Hello everyone, and welcome to part four of Doom Month. Okay, now first, now I should have to say is that um, <clears throat> even after the book was released, it was quite a while before I actually began reading Paul of Dune, mainly because, well, at the end of the Sandworms, I was kind of, um, you know, sort of doomed out, I guess you could say. I mean, first is, of course, that, um, <clears throat> he, well, I wasn't really too happy with the ending of Dune, or Sandworms anyway, but not, not only because it was uh, just weak, in my opinion, but mostly because um, it pretty much closed up any way of making a sequel. <clears throat> you know, all the bad guys were taken out. Um, every all of the different little plot threads were solved and, and put in a neat little package. And um, like, it, there wasn't really any point to um, you know um, continuing al along. <clears throat> and um, upon hearing that this was a uh, interquel quadrilogy thing. And that, that that really wasn't um, like you know, like stuff happening in between novels did kind of piss me off a little, a little like I said with the um, you know chapter house. But <clears throat> overall, it just felt unnecessary, and for the most part, I'm pretty much right exactly because Paul of Dune is pretty much completely pointless. Not only is it completely pointless, but I felt the entire thing was basically just a we love Paul Atreides fest and constantly trying to shove down sympathy into our throat, shove sympathy down our throats. <clears throat> and um, it's essentially, it's, um, well, the setting is like it takes place during the Jihad and there's... Um, you know, they're like, and he's growing like paranoid over assassination attempts and so forth, and and well, there is of course, <clears throat> and uh, b back and forth it shows um, it cuts back and forth between uh, you know Paul's childhood, uh, it cuts back to ch Paul's childhood and showing him growing up, <clears throat> and um, talking about this, and we see this uh, whole conflict with House Atreides and they get in, in their one of their allies House Ikaz I think and they're um, fighting against House Grumman and there's more you know Harkonnen being bad and doing and assisting House Grumman in secret and so forth and um, <clears throat> and um, essentially this is like the one saving grace of this whole thing because with the whole with them just spending the entire adulthood just trying to shove sympathy down our throats like oh Paul doesn't want to do any of this bad horrible stuff he just has to he has to have all of this um, you know so he doesn't look weak in front of the rest of the universe or something given I mean it especially which is kind of weird because it's kind of a moot point I mean <clears throat> he controls the spice, right? I I mean, I know you can't... They, they always say, like, he who controls the spice controls the universe, and I know that's not entirely true, because, you know, even when he does, there's still all sorts of loyalties and political and cultural differences between the different planets and Arrakis and <clears throat> the past loyalties to the previous emperor and so forth. But he, <clears throat> I would think that him controlling the, having a, essentially a monopoly over the spice would account for something because, you know, in order, because you, the entire humanity needs the spice, you know, they need it to uh, tra you know, have interstellar travel, they need it to extend their lives, otherwise their lives would be extremely short because they've rejected technology for the most part, <clears throat> they, because the of the uh, whole Butlerian Jihad and so forth and um, and it just spends the entire time like I, like I said just make it a sick like oh Paul's a good guy he's he 
he's being tricked into doing all this or he, he doesn't want to do he's just uh, doing it because other people want him to and you know whatever <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> my um, personal score for this would be three stars you know really the only saving grace is the Paul's childhood part and I felt it was good enough because it runs throughout the whole book, cutting back and forth between the adult sections. <clears throat> and um, I felt it was, um, and I, yeah, I felt it was good enough that it kind of saves it just barely, really. <clears throat> and uh, if you're gonna, and I'd say if you're, if you're, oh, but only if you're a Dune fan, okay. <clears throat> I'd recommend only get, getting this if you're a fan of Dune, and even then, I'd still just recommend skipping past over the whole jihad adult Paul thing, and just 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 read the Paul's childhood because that's really the only part that I really found any real enjoyment in. <clears throat> now for Winds of Dune the direct sequel between to Dune Messiah. <coughs> anyway, uh, like I said, this takes place right after Dune Messiah and <coughs> the whole point of and this is like um, they're chasing after this guy named Bronzo who's the son of um, <coughs> Romber from uh, the Earl of Ix, <clears throat> and um, well, and he's like uh, spreading all these pamphlets and books and so forth <clears throat> about Paul and his, and you know, decrying Paul that he's not a messiah or any of that stuff, but just because uh, hunting them down and you know working as hard as she can to hunt this guy down. And you know, kill him, and of course. And at one point, he actually, she actually succeeds. But um, Paul, at this point, who's um, or presumed dead, but he's still running around as the uh, like some sort of blind priest or something. And he, um, you know, lets and he's able to break Bronzo out, and and uh, Paul and. Uh, just, Ali is thinking like, why is Paul doing this? Why is Paul working against her and working with Bronzo? <clears throat> and we start with like a, the first of two two different flashback stories, and this one is um, you know, talking about more about Paul's child's childhood, and and um, you know like how we, uh, him and Bronzo nearly. Or you know, go out and like join the circus. Or I think called it a jongleer troop or something. It, it's the circus essentially, <clears throat> and you know, like nearly gets killed. But um, like uh, Ronzo's father of um, House Vernius, you know, Ro uh, Romber <clears throat> dies saving Paul, and now Bronzo hates House Atreides and so forth, and like that's kind of the reason why he distrusts him and doesn't like and is doing all the things that he's doing kind of <clears throat> but when she um, explains this but when Jessica explains this to um, you know um, Alia this is whole thing essentially just goes in one ear and out the other and she's still working as hard as she can to find and kill Bronzo <clears throat> and um, then later on, Jessica meets up with uh, uh, Stilgar, and then she tells him the story of why she's helping Bronzo and <clears throat> so forth. And this when and this story takes place during the jihad, and um, and this is kind of like at this point, it gets kind of funny because um, <clears throat> Ollie is getting more I want to say like comically genius, comically villainous or whatever. <clears throat> because now she's, uh, you know, doing all sorts of things like death penalty for anybody that reads this 
stuff that Bronzo Ray lays up or releases or whatever <clears throat> and so forth and you know I kind of can't help but just sort of chuckle a little bit at how just kind of silly her reactions that all this is becoming like they're just trying to build on the whole she's a villain she's an abomination you know she's evil and stuff <clears throat> and um um you know like it's the, the thing is like the reason um, during the flashbacks they uh, talk about this whole thing where um paul just orders the exec or the destruction of like 11 planets and is doing all sorts of you know atrocities during his jihad <clears throat> and over the course of it it's um you know like um and even even like changes the name he or the he changes the name to from Khaled into like something something Muad'Dib or origin of Muad'Dib and um, eventually all of these build up atrocities eventually make Jessica decide to murder Paul. I mean, okay, your sis the sisterhood actually brings her up to it, but eventually she just all of these atrocities and crimes against humanity that Paul does and he, he eventually decides to just kill him, kill Paul but when we he finally encounters him he um, him and Bronzo have worked out this sort of deal or something and you know he's uh, just uh, <clears throat> And he's, and he's and Bronzo has agreed to like release all these documents damning Paul and so forth and Paul has said like you know that that's the reason why I why he why I you know ordered the destruction of 11 planets it's for no other reason to get people to hate me and you're like <clears throat> and like that's the reason why he's doing these atrocities so the people who already kind of hate him will hate him more you know people who hate him for usurping control of the emperor's throne now hate him more for committing all sorts of these atrocities and oh and another another thing is that um, <clears throat> another attempt at shoving sympathy down my throat is there that they say that like oh it's not paul that does it or this time it's not paul that does it it's his fanatics that do it it's his fanatics that are doing all this stuff because you know it's not like he's in control of his fanatics it's they're, they're only his fanatical followers that would fight and die for him you know <laughs> but anyway uh, yeah like not, not even the flashbacks to Paul's childhood and seeing him growing up can really save this piece of crap so <clears throat> in my whole uh, judgment of this I give this two out of five you know like I like the flashbacks to Paul's childhood and it's all nice and stuff let him essentially running away to join the circus but overall <clears throat> just you know just sucked and spent way too much time trying to shove sympathy down our throats so um, yeah not something I that I can really even see myself kind of recommend or, or not something I could see myself recommend really at all <laughs> now is uh, of course the trilogy the new latest trilogy <clears throat> called the well, I don't know. It's, the, it's um, the Sisterhood of Doom, which is part of a new trilogy. Now, well, my initial initial uh, reaction would have been, you know, for them to finish the project they were already in the middle of, Heroes of Dune. But as you can tell with the <clears throat> what I've been saying, I really have no big love of that at all. So, yeah. A anyway, um. <clears throat> essentially this takes place about it starts out about 80 years after the um, the Battle of Corin <clears throat> and um, 
I mean, after the Battle of Corinth takes place anyway. And, you know, the, the jihad is over. The machines have been wiped out. <clears throat> you know, uh, Gilbertus has started a Mentat school. The Bene Gesserit is still in its founding stages, as is the Souk Doctors Medical Foundation, Medical Area, Medical School. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> Uh, essentially, there are like there's um, two big main stories. There's the uh, you know Vorian Atreides uh, and um, living on Arrakis and sort of having to deal with you know one of the Harkonnens trying to hunt him down and kill him and so forth, and the um, <coughs> and like some siblings trying to kill him, and then there's this whole bigger, much more exciting plot in my opinion about the whole. <coughs> Yeah, much more exciting plot about the Butlerians and their attempt to wipe out all technology, really. Like, <clears throat> on the one hand, you can see where they're coming from, you know, because of all the horrible things that machines have been doing, or the thinking machines, so you, you can see why they don't want to go. But then they just take it to more extreme measures as it goes on, even, like, tearing down hospitals and and so forth you know saying like it's some sort of blasphemy to blasphemy to try and understand the human body <clears throat> and like if you're dying of a disease like like that you know god meant for you to die or something like on the bright side is um <clears throat> it's not like the leadership is a bunch of hypocrites or anything because like even the leader had his legs blown off by a bomb and <clears throat> he's uh, refusing medical treatment, so yeah. <clears throat> and overall, essentially, the theme here is that of, uh, aside from the Borean Atreides stuff, <clears throat> is that of, you know, science versus religion, and kind of obviously taking science's side, making them seem the more logical group. You know, because we have them, because we have the Butlerians, you know, tearing down hospitals and, you know, basically killing anybody even remotely, like, and they're using intimidation to force the Empire to abandon machinery and so forth. <clears throat> and on the other side of the scientists, there's the, you know, the Ventport Industries and, you know, the people working there. And essentially, um, overall, this whole trilogy obviously only exists to answer all the questions that I'm sure were around, you know, when uh, the the uh, hunters and sandworms came out, like um, how Erasmus came back into contact with Omnius, and how Omnius get, get a, got a new body, and how they both built got together, built the new machine empire, and how, um, <clears throat> or how, uh, Norma Sendra became the new, um, oracle of, became like the oracle of time or something, why, how, how is the machine, how is the empire is, of man is so anti-technology and, and, um, <clears throat> You know, yeah, any, anyway, um, for the most part, there's really not much, um, like, on the one, like, there's also a lot of, uh, sort of fan service type moments, like, um, like, there's this, um, Sook Doctor gives, uh, Mentat, the uh, Gilbertus, the, um, uh, Sappho juice, and, you know, that, that's kind of small, but then there are, like, larger moments, like, um, the character Anari Idaho, it always makes sure to remind you that she's a Nari Idaho, you know. Like most other characters, they're just they just call it by their first names. Griffin Harkonnen isn't always called Griffin Harkonnen; he's just called Griffin. And um, Vorian is always just called v Vorian, but I notice a lot of times they always make sure to call her a Nari Idaho, making sure that you know that she's an Idaho. She's related to Duncan Idaho. Ooh. <clears throat> And there's really no reason to make her in Idaho other than, you know, 
to remind everyone about Duncan Idaho. And um, yeah, it's a fan service can be kind of grating a little bit. And um, also, now that I think about it, there's not really much suspense going on because you know that you know the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood is gonna make it in the end. You know the Sook Doctors are gonna be okay. You know th that the Mentat School is eventually gonna make it out. It's all really just on the excitement of um, seeing how they make it. They all survive and so forth. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, my final rating for this is four out of five. I, I really enjoyed this because, you know, I felt that the characters were interesting. The story was, you know, interesting and kind of necessary to answer all the questions from the, from Jihad, from the, from, from the hunters and sand, hunter and sandworms. And overall, I felt it was definitely much more well told than the, than, you know, the whole, than the, than the um, Heroes of Dune books that I was done, that I just got done talking about. And this is something that I would definitely recommend for anybody. Liked it, loved it, check it out, go. Anyway, um, until next time, or until when we check out part five, well, um, just say, uh, well, just see you later.